Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Monica T, Bill A, and Mike. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, we're gonna talk a little bit about Tesla's pricing and demand. There is a lot of noise right now out there, so I wanna simplify things and help people understand what's really going on when it comes to these topics. To do this, let's go back to quarter two of 2020 when Elon was asked how he plans to manage Tesla striving for the highest margins in the auto industry versus getting the highest number of cars in the highest number of consumers' hands, aka lower prices, lower margins, but more adoption. Keep in mind, at this time, a Model Y long range cost 52.9 thousand US dollars. At that time, Elon said, like the thing that bugs me the most about where we're at right now is that our cars are not affordable enough. He said, so yes, we need to not go bankrupt. You know, they can't sell cars at too low of prices. But at that time, Tesla's profitability was around 1% or something, according to Elon. Like, I think we just want to be like slightly profitable and maximize growth and make the cars as affordable as possible. So at the time for Tesla, they of course needed to become profitable consistently and build up a cash reserve to make them more recession proof and to avoid Tesla ever having to go to the market to raise money in unfavorable circumstances so they don't have to dilute the company by issuing new stock or they don't have to take on debt at unnecessary interest rate levels. Right now, Tesla has around $19 billion in cash on hand, so those two objectives have been achieved. And on the last point Elon made two years ago, you may be thinking, well, Elon was kind of lying. He said they just want to be slightly profitable, maybe 5-10% to maximize growth and keep the cars as affordable as possible. It seems like they're not doing that because the margins are 30%, so in theory, the cars could be more affordable. But you have to remember the demand. This right here is an Econ 101 chart with price on the Y axis and quantity demanded on the X axis. Right now, Tesla's prices are high, so on a graph like this, they would fall somewhere in this region on this demand line. In case you don't believe me, this is Elon talking about Tesla's prices on the Q2 call this year. He said they're frankly at embarrassing levels, and he said, I'm hopeful that at some point we can reduce the prices a little bit. The point being Elon wants to bring prices down, but given the high demand and the higher input costs in this inflationary environment, it just hasn't made sense so far. With all of that in mind, at the current price level for Tesla vehicles, there's going to be a corresponding level of demand. So what will happen when Tesla decides to lower prices? We shift down the demand line, meaning there's going to be a higher level of quantity demanded at lower prices. This is a big part of that demand lever that people are always talking about with Tesla having around 30% margins, the highest in the industry, outside of maybe a Ferrari or something like that. They have the most room to move down this demand line, AKA to increase the demand by reducing the prices. Now, personally, I still think Tesla has unmet demand even at these higher prices in a lot of places globally, but at some point that will dry up. And then, like I said, we'll move down this demand line by lowering prices, and that's actually a good thing. We won't spend time going over this note, but just look at this title, Tesla's third quarter deliveries miss consensus. Have we ever flipped this and thought maybe that the consensus is missing Tesla's deliveries? You know, I know that this is just how the stock market works. It's based on people's expectations and all of that. But at the same time, should it really be working like this? Apparently, we have a ton of people basing Tesla's success or failures upon these arbitrary expectations that the outside world, these analysts actually set, who have very limited data and information and also have historically been very wrong about Tesla. When you think about it like that, it makes absolutely no sense. I'm just somewhat alarmed at how many people I'm seeing falling victim to this short-term narrative that's kind of being perpetuated by people like Gary Black, who I have a lot of respect for, but right now for somebody to have fears about Tesla's demand when the prices are high, the margins are high, Tesla's cash reserves are incredibly strong, it's just very unnecessary and not really how a long-term investor should be thinking. So just don't let yourself get wrapped up in all of this short-term noise and toxicity. It's not good for anybody's mental health and it's not necessary. Most of you know, when I link up with sponsors for the channel, I do my best to bring you a discount and products or services that can enhance your life. 
That's only part of why I've linked up again with Birch Mattress, the sponsor of today's video. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Listen, if you live to age 75, you will on average spend 25 years of it sleeping. 25 years. So anything that we do for that long, in my opinion, is worthy of a little investment. Now the question becomes, why Birch? First, Birch has several third-party certifications, meaning the products are tried and tested. Birch also ensures their materials are produced and harvested sustainably, which I know many of us here will appreciate. Birch's Lux line, what Ashley and I went with, is made with organic cashmere, wool cotton, and 100% natural latex, created with cooling and support in mind. Breathability is an absolute essential for me because when I sleep, I'm essentially a furnace and Ashley will confirm. Birch will deliver your mattress right to your door for free in the United States. And with Birch, you also get a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. Birch has been kind enough to offer electrified subscribers $400 off a mattress and two free EcoRest pillows if you use my link in the description below. And if you know anybody else that may be looking for a new bed, feel free to share that link with them as well. And this is interesting because like I said, there's so much noise from analysts in Wall Street and mainstream media, all of that. But if you look at the actual analyst ratings when it comes to Tesla stock, Right now, of the 49 analysts following Tesla, 27 or 55% have a buy rating. Looking at this chart, that's actually the highest percentage of Tesla analysts with a buy rating on the company dating back to 2015. So we live in a world of headlines and clicks, but when push comes to shove, Tesla is killing it, and you can end that commentary right there. Next up, just in case you've been waiting, Tesla's wireless portable charger 2.0 is back in stock. It was out of stock for a while. $70, 10,000 milliamp hours of battery, and yes, it is Qi enabled. Here we have more folks trying out the new CCS adapter for Tesla. This user was trying it at an Electrify America station. Just wanted to let you know, based on a lot of the comments I'm reading, you might have a better experience if you initiate the charging session in the app and actually avoid the touch screen on the charger itself altogether. So again, initiate everything in the mobile app and try to avoid interacting with the touch screen at all if you can. Just a quickie here, but the latest version of Tesla's FSD beta.2.3 is now rolling out. No real major changes that I could see, mostly just undocumented bug fixes. Next up, Tesla has crossed the 10,000 superchargers installed threshold in Europe, and one fifth of those have been installed just in the first nine months of this year. Those 10,000 stalls are at 900 different charging locations across Europe, and the note said, due to a partial opening of third-party brands, these superchargers being open to non-Tesla customers, Tesla's supercharging network is now also the largest public 150 kilowatt fast charging network in Europe. I would also add Tesla is going to have the premium locations being one of the first movers in really all of these regions. I think that's an underrated point in the long run. If you're the first mover in this space, you have access to the best locations. Next, just a quick note from a Wall Street Journal article. So we talked last week about how there's a lot of global pushback against the Inflation Reduction Act. It's of course going to hurt some automakers that are not producing vehicles in North America. On that note, some administration officials are saying they continue to speak with the allies to address their concerns while working on details of the implementation of this new law. Personally, just want to put it out there, I won't be surprised if we see some changes and some loopholes for some of these non-North American producing automakers. Now, no, I'm not saying that the North American assembly requirements are just going to be dropped, but maybe that the timelines are pushed back or adjusted in some way. Here we have some good news for GM regarding the Chevy Bolt. Now, I will say, I think this vehicle is pretty important for overall electrification. So many people still think EVs are just all luxury vehicles, they're not yet affordable, but this is a vehicle you can tell people that 
Hey, it's an EV with 260 miles of range that starts at $25,000. And next year for GM, if they can work out the sourcing requirements, which yes, is a pretty big if, that vehicle could go under $20,000 with a $7,500 tax credit because they are made in North America. GM is set to hike production of the Chevy Bolt after delivering the highest quarterly deliveries of the Bolt EV and EUV at 14,709 vehicles for Q3. GM wants to expand production of the Bolt up to 70,000 next year from around 44,000 this year and in 2021, GM sold 24,828 of the Chevy Bolt. Looking at GM's level of electrification though, still out of the 1.65 million cars that sold through the first three quarters of this year, we have around the 22,000 Bolts and then some change outside of that. It'll be interesting to watch this though, because one, I can't imagine this vehicle is profitable, but two, this is the only EV from GM that's actually still on that BEV2 platform, meaning it's the only one that won't be using GM's next generation Altium battery platform for basically all of its EVs. So we'll see how they proceed with selling the Chevy Bolt. Here we have GM adding John McNeil as a board member, taking the number of board members at GM to 13. This is actually a really nice get for GM. Looking at John's LinkedIn page, you can see back from 2015 to 2018, he served as the president of Global Sales, Marketing, Government Relations, Delivery, and Service at Tesla. Shifting gears to Rivian. Now, I've said before that there's no guarantees that Rivian or Lucid are still around 10 years from now, especially if we head into a real severe global recession over the next few years, as these companies are in very delicate positions. But all Rivian can do is stack one good quarter on another, and they did exactly that in quarter three. And technically this headline is true, but back in March, Rivian did reduce its 2022 guidance from 50,000 to 25,000, so Rivian's on track to hit that 25,000 adjusted number. Rivian produced 7,000 vehicles in the third quarter, which brings the total year to date to 14,300. So Rivian has to produce about 11,000 vehicles in Q4 to hit its adjusted guidance. Just a quick one here on Cruise. It's been getting a lot of attention lately on the interwebs, but unfortunately it's been for the wrong reasons. Over the weekend, there was another instance of a Cruise vehicle stopping in the middle of an intersection, backing up traffic until somebody could come out and move the car. Sticking with autonomy, a note on Waymo. If you happen to see this headline, it's a bit misleading as if you go and actually read the article, there is still a safety driver behind the wheel for this testing that Waymo is doing. This thread though is definitely an important one, especially as the shortage of truck drivers is continually increasing. This technology can't come fast enough, but as far as I can tell, there's no timeline from Waymo on when they could have this service up and running without a safety driver. All I've really found was it's still coming in a few years. Next up, we have Maserati looking to get in on the EV action with its upcoming Gran Turismo Folgore. Now, this is just an Italian word for lightning, which is kind of cool. And the Gran Turismo naming is Maserati looking to bring the track performance on the road. Growing up, I always loved how Maseratis looked and where I live, you rarely saw them on the road, so that was cool too. But this upcoming EV should have a 92.5 kilowatt hour pack, an 800 volt architecture, and a charging speed of up to 270 kilowatts. The Folgore is expected in the US by September of next year, should come in around $200,000. Here we have Toyota's BZ4X, it's all electric SUV with zero sales in the month of September. Yes, they have not yet found a solution to some of the lug nuts coming loose on the wheels that could potentially lead to the wheels falling off the vehicle. But Toyota is the expert at making cars, so they're gonna crush Tesla. Next up, in response to Sawyer tweeting about a Starlink grant, Elon said, should be noted, Starlink is still far from cash flow positive. All low earth orbit communication constellations to date have gone bankrupt, so any support is super helpful. So if you were expecting a Starlink IPO sometime soon, here's some cold water for you. And naturally we have to end today's episode talking about this. Apparently Elon has wrote a letter saying that he's agreeing to buy Twitter at the original offer price, seemingly out of left field. Then we had a CNBC article saying they've learned Elon could own Twitter within a matter of days and that all litigation would come to an end. 
This could imply that the funding has already been secured. I know a lot of Tesla shareholders are just worried if Elon's gonna have to sell more Tesla stock to complete this deal, which may be done this week. Now, even if Elon does have to sell Tesla stock, I'll happily buy a few of his shares, no big deal. Man, it's unpopular, but I've said all along, I would love Elon to buy Twitter to see what he could do with it. I'm starting to like Twitter more and more. If this deal goes through, I will definitely use Twitter more and more. I just think it has a ton of potential and based on what Elon has said it could turn into, it's pretty exciting stuff. And I still genuinely believe it'll have close to zero impact on Tesla's future. Elon can multitask on a level that humanity has rarely seen before, so I personally have no concerns. Don't forget, check out Birch Mattress to get that $400 off linked below. Share the link with anybody else if you know somebody looking. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.